Picadev button is an intuitive user input that's easy to get started with. Buttons are one of the most common user interfaces out there and for good reason, they're easy to understand and operate. I'm gonna show you how to get started with your Picadev button and a Microbit V2. We'll connect these two together and run some examples to use the button as a control input for the Microbit. Let's start with a closer look at the button. The Picadev button features a clicky tactile button on the top and a bunch of electronics on the bottom. There are two Picadev connectors for daisy chaining connections, four ID switches that allow multiple buttons to be connected together, leave all of these switches in the off position for now, and a small power LED. You may need to install the switch cap onto your button. Simply hold it over the top and press until you feel it snap into place. To follow along, you'll of course need a Picadev button, a Microbit V2, a Picadev adapter for Microbit, and a Picadev cable to connect everything together. Plug your microbit into the adapter, making sure that the buttons are facing up. Connect your Picadev cable to the adapter and the other end to your button. Then connect to your computer with a USB cable. In the article for this tutorial, download the driver files that we'll need. Find the download section and under the microbit tab, right click and download Picadev Unified, save link as, and I'll save this to a Picadev directory in my documents. And on Picadev switch, right click, save link as, and save it to that directory too. We're going to use Thony for this tutorial. If you need help getting started with Microbit and Thony, refer to the guide. And there's also a link if you prefer to use a web programming interface too. Open Thony, connect to your Microbit, and upload both of those files. Select them both and upload to Microbit. And here they are on my Microbit. Return to the article and find the first example. Check if the button was or is pressed. Highlight that code example, copy it, and paste it into a new script. I'll click the green run button, and when we're prompted to save, I'll save to my microbit as main.py. The script is running and my shell is printing all zeros. That is the state of the Picadev button. If I click the button, we can see a spike in that graph. And if we, I'll just stop the script and scroll back, and there's a one there. So we're printing all zeros while the button wasn't pressed. And then for the moment the button is pressed, we get a one. I run that script again. Click, click, click. And you can see all three of those press events in the graph. Let's take a closer look at the code. On the first line, we import the Picadev switch module. This is a generic class that may be used with other switch type Picadev modules in the future and we have a function to create a delay. Next, we call the initialization function and we assign that to the variable button. So anytime you see button in this script, we're referring to our physical Picadev button. Then we have an infinite loop and if the button was pressed, we print a one, else we print a zero. And that's what's creating this stream of numbers in the shell. The dot was pressed property returns true or false for whether the button was pressed or not. So it's kind of in the name. And we're printing one and zero so that we can see the data in the plotter because the plotter won't show true or false. So our button can detect a click event and we see that in the plotter as that spike. If I press and hold the button though, we just have that spike. The was pressed property, this, this property here, rejects a hold event. This is essentially saying, was the button pressed down since the last time we checked? And that can only be true once while we're holding it down. If we want to get the state of the button right now, then we use the isPressed property. Now when we run the script, if I press the button, we get that spike. But if I press and hold, you can see that value is being held constantly at one until I release it, where it goes down to zero. Okay, so we can read the state of our button. Cool, but let's actually do something useful with it. The microbit has this beautiful five by five display that can actually show images. Let's remix this program so that we can cycle through different images on the microbit's display. To drive the display, we'll need to import some new functionality. From microbit, import display. And we'll also need to import image so we can show some pre-baked images that's supplied by Microbit. And you'll notice that image has a capital I 
while display has a lowercase d. Not sure why. Let's first prove that we can get the display working. I'll just make a call to display.show, and then we want to show image.heart, and that will show a nice love heart. I'll just comment out all this other code with Alt 3. Run the script. I have to block my really bright studio light so you can see that. But there's a heart. Okay, so we have a heart showing on our micro bit. We know how to show an image. If you're wondering how I know all this, the image class is really well documented in the MicroPython docs. I'll include a link to this document below. But if we scroll down a bit, we can see that there are all these predefined images for a heart, a happy face, a sad face, etc. Okay, so we can show an image on the display. Now we want to cycle through a pool of a few images. I'll remove this line. We know how to run the display now, and I'll create a pool of images. Images will be a list, and we can put in image heart, like before, and we'll do image.happy and image.sad. I think that's enough. So we have our Python list of three images. We're going to need some kind of index that steps through this list. And I'll initialize that as zero. Now we can uncomment our while true loop with Alt 4. And when the button is pressed, we want to step to the next image. So we don't need this print statement, but instead we will say index plus equals one. We actually don't need this else because else do nothing. And now we can call display dot show images index. So when the button is pressed, the index will increment by one, which will move down this list. Then every loop, we also want to update the display with the current image. And that is pulled from the images list and pointed to by the index. There's one other thing that we have to do, which is to make sure the index never goes out of bounds. If index is greater than the length of images, which is the list, it has three elements in that list. And actually that needs to be greater than or equal to, then we set index equal to zero. Let's also print some helpful debugging information. Print index to the shell. Now when we run the script, hopefully there are no errors. We have our heart, and that makes sense. We removed that first display for the heart, and all we have is this images list. So we're actually showing the heart by, sh by calling display.show images zero, because index starts at zero, and the heart is the zeroth element in that list. Now when I click the button, that jumps to a happy face because index has been incremented to one. We can see that in the shell with the debug information. And image.happy is the next element in that list. And if I click the button again, we have a sad face because of course that's the next image. And we'll check that our wrapping code works. If I click the button once again, it goes back to a heart. Now I'm using the is pressed property here which means that if I press and hold, it's going to constantly scroll through all of those images in sequence. Now it's possible to use more than one picative button at the same time. And to do that, we just need to make sure that it has a unique ID switch setting. You might recall that the first button we set up, we had all the ID switches off. For this second device, I will just set the first ID switch on using a pen or other instrument. I've daisy chained my second button off the first with its unique ID switch setting, and now we're ready to bring it into our coding project. I'm going to call this button B. So now we have two instances of the picadev switch class. The only difference is this one has a non-default ID switch setting. So we can include the argument ID equals, and now we include a list of all those switch settings. Remember the first switch is on, so we have a one, and then the remaining three switches are off. So we have three zeros. Our script is currently incrementing on the button press, but my second button, button B, I want it to decrement the index. So one will step up through the list and one will step down. I'll just copy all of this code 
and paste it again. Now we're working with button B, and we want to subtract one from the index. And now we just need to check if index is less than zero, then index is equal to the length of images minus one. Our first if condition will increment the index, and our second if condition will decrement the index. Now, when I run this code, we still have our heart. And when I press the button to go up, we get index equal to one in the shell. You can see that here, that's as normal. And we've gone to a smiley face. And when I press the next button, button B, that index should decrement back to zero, and we're back to a heart. So starting at index zero, we can count upwards, zero, one, two. And using button B, the second button, we can count down two, one, zero. Nice. Two buttons in the same project. Now we built this two button example with this display code remix, but if you'd like a much simpler multiple button example, you can find that in the other examples section under the multiple buttons tab, where we just increment or decrement a counter. And there's also a few other more advanced examples too. And so there you have it. We were able to connect a picative button and measure button presses in two different ways using is pressed and was pressed. We remix that code to create a cool image selector project. And then we even extended that project with a second button to introduce another type of control. In this case, scrolling forwards or backwards through this slideshow. If you make something cool with this starter project or you just have some questions, let us know on our forums. We're full-time makers and happy to help. Until next time, catch you later.